lot of people told me in the past, you're too optimistic, but it's not about optimism. It's about data. It's about science. We have seen that all those big guys getting very interested to renewable and putting a lot of investment and the whole PV system is getting really more and more reliable and more and more economically competitive. Think about the idea that everything will be energy. PV is cheaper than structural plywood. So don't just make cheaper solar panels. We're going to have cars with, you know, solar on top. We're going to have you know, houses, and not just on the rooftop. We came up with, uh, with one sentence which can summarize everything. PV everywhere, for everybody, and forever. The PV is a wonderful source of energy. It is free, but it is intermittent. Photovoltaic is a source of production which is focused mainly in the day hours. So it means that the grids that receives then this production is particularly stressed during these day hours. So we need to smooth these peaks in some way. Yes, we can combine now very successfully solar together with uh, value storage technology and use solar as uh, really uh, everyday energy. So in a small box or rather big box, depending uh, on an uh, application, it's completely feasible. Store me in a what? I think she said in a box, my dear. Figure of speech, right? Therefore, we must develop the mechanisms to store this energy, like battery system, solar power concentration, wind hydrant, among others. We are very lucky because there are lots of uh, technology available to store the, the sun, I would say. Uh, of course, uh, the most promising are battery and hydrogen. Today, we know a lot of technologies that are already in operation and others that will even come that we don't have in our radar nowadays. But there are many others. It will really depend on what application. Uh, is it for stationary? Is it for mobility? What are the environment? What are the constraints? Why didn't you keep me in the loop about that? I literally turn around you all year, so I assumed you'd be aware of that. We must face many challenges so that the network and the entire system can buffer that new variable capacity that is entering, altering the common operation of our electric system that has historically been based on coal, gas and hydro energy. And you need to store, but not only to store, you need also to manage all this energy mix. So it's uh, all about intelligent and smart system to really drive and optimize this combination of all this energetic mix. In order to properly address the development of uh, storage systems, we need to take care of the regulation and then to the market design. You go step by step, you try and error, and at the end, the reality is that in all the systems, this storage systems have been installed and they are integrated because technology, they are ready to be integrated. So it's not just about technology. We have the technology, the technology is going better day after day, but we have also to make grow the regulation and the market design. Smart grids are needed in current world if you really want not only to introduce storage systems, but if we want to really electrify the world. So how can you store me in a box? Damn, it feels weird to say that. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. Probably. The electrochemical storage, uh, we used to refer to this as battery energy storage systems. The lithium battery yeah, are a reality. We could envisage also a role for the green hydrogen, like a way to manage a seasonal storage. All of these kind of technologies uh, are additional to the pumping uh, hydro storage that is uh, very common and used technology that uh, is already very uh, common in most of the world. Today we are working to promote wind, hydrogen and sustainable reactivation in our country. It is possible. So we are achieving at the same time the lower possible cost of the electricity, but we are also giving uh, some services to the grids that are needed, especially because we are shutting down some other source of uh, 
3CD generation that used to give the services in the past. In Chile, we are seeing the development of large projects on a larger scale that are not having financial or manufacturing obstacles. Although there is a pending issue that we still do not face related to circularity of these panels. For instance, what we will do with this waste or how we can extend its useful life, we use its materials to create a truly sustainable industry over time and not generate an environmental liability in the future. I doubt that there are people who still do not believe in PV technologies. I know some of them, actually. You mean you can see them? Yeah, of course I can. Can't you? Well, considering I'm mostly a huge ball of fire 150 million kilometers away from you, not really, no. I mean, the PV is a reality today. It's the cheapest possible source of electricity in most of the country. We could be more independent from the current uh, big uh, monopolistic, oligopolistic uh, producers. You would reduce the CO2 emissions. So uh, by investing more on these systems, uh, you will definitely contribute to fight the climate change. Uh, actually, if you look to the evolution of the renewables, uh, at least half of the growth on renewables uh, could be assigned to the PV technology. I would say we are really in a, in a nice revolution, environmental revolution. A revolution? We have the chance to be active and to have concrete uh, projects for this revolution. I could teach you some tricks about revolution. Is that a scientist joke? I've already done a lot. Okay, I think we've got it. It's now and we really have everything in our hands to go further on. So come. <laughs> we have a, a factory in Sicily uh, called the Trisan, who is capable to give a higher efficiency compared to the PERC technology that is the most common in the world. We are uh, planning to scale up this uh, factory from 200 megawatt per year to 3 gigawatt per year in the next uh, couple of years. At the end, the objective is to reach more than 30% of efficiency. Of course, we will say we need to go faster. But yes, we feel it's now moving. Uh, there are lots of nice uh, opportunities in Europe. We have a, a large market. So we have to work, and we're already doing it in Europe in particular, in projects like circular economy. And by the way, we are collaborating also with CINES in doing this. We have the highest solar radiation in the world plant factors of 35%, and nowadays the production of energy by solar generation means in the central zone of Chile is more competitive than that by fossil fuels. We recently awarded the largest contribution, $143 million over 10 years, to create the biggest R&D center in the north of Chile. So uh, PV is arriving and it's just a question what kind of role do you want to, to drive in this revolution?